Now, what's all this I hear about the comic? First of all, a big, big thank you to my subscribers. We just reached just over 100, and I'm really pleased. Uh, and a big thank you to Luke, who gave me a shout out on his channel for his Christmas video. So, thanks, Luke. Um, so, on to the comet. Well, tonight I'm going to try and catch you the comet uh, C 2022 E3, which is only comes round, hasn't been round since 50,000 years, apparently. Um, also known as the Green Comet. Now, from where I'm here in London, it's, it's going below Polaris at the moment. So I'm going to try and wait for it to get as high as possible. And hopefully, fingers crossed, the skies will stay clear and I'll be able to catch a, the comet and have you a little uh, image to show at the end of this video. So I'm going to wait for it to clear up a bit and uh, try and catch this once in a lifetime comet because once it's once it's gone it's gone it's gonna there's a high probability that it will never ever return it's gonna leave the solar system and there's there's, there's images out there on youtube and uh, astro Bain and uh, instagram where uh, people are capturing the comet and this is gonna be my little attempt um it's getting it's gonna get higher and higher and it's getting closer to the earth by the hour so i'm gonna try and capture it and and process it and I'll show you what I get. So I'm going to go on the computer and show you where it is uh, at the minute. Well, I'm on Carter's the Sewell, and there's the comet there looking north, due north, and there's Polaris. Now, as you can see, there's me horizon I've put in, and it's quite, quite low. So I'm going to, uh, going to advance it by a bit and see how it goes. It, uh, and I'll, I think as we get into the, maybe 11 o'clock tonight, it's going to be an, an, a nice height there um, for me coming up to the zenith there. And I, uh, I should be really happy with that. So I'm going to keep imaging for a few hours yet yeah, of my other target and then I will try and get the comet that is going to be interesting to capture so I'm not going to try I'm not going to sneak a peek here I'm just going to wait till 11ish and it should be nice and high and I'll see what I can get well it's getting mistier and mistier so I've decided to start taking the images. I've took 49, 30 seconds images. You can see there's the comet there. Um, just back off. There it is. Um, the mean is 3,000 over 3,000. So it's not, it's not the best. And the reason why I started to take the images earlier than I wanted to is uh, it's getting a bit misty and something like this it's not going to be very good so you can see the movement of the comet there if I uh, zoom right in we should on the next one it's the separation between that and a background star is getting wider and that's just a 30 second image i've got okay that's moved again i've got um orbitals and that's where i put it on what you can do is set the tracking rate and the guide rate that's why this is like that because it's attempting to keep the comet uh, centered or thereabouts um, and as you can see it's, the comet is moving but it's not quite it doesn't quite follow it perfectly but it's there 
it's not too bad I say you know over 52 it's moved from the center here to here so I'm not sure it's not too bad uh, if I can get 120 in and I've obviously I won't stack all that 120 to the comet I'll probably do uh, 60 which is 30 minutes and hopefully you can get something decent so I'll keep doing this for a bit more and I'll hang out and if it gets clear if it, the mist dies away or something which I doubt is probably going to get worse um, I'll take more images later so uh, I'll see it in a bit if it doesn't happen and I'll see it in pics and sight hello again I'm back on pics and sight now I'm going to show you the process I've used done to um, to to do the comic now first things first after using the weighted batch pre-processing I've uh, stacked all the subs together um, and that's made me a master and that's the master that they come up with now you can see it's quite badly gradiated uh, you can see there the comets moved but all the stars are all aligned and that's going to be all the registered images So what I've done is took the stars out so I'm going to keep the stars and I threw away the rest of it. Now after I've done that, I basically went into this um, process. Oh, excuse me. Process. And into comet alignment. Now there's all the registered images I've got from the registered files I added them all in now what you got to do first of all is click on the show the first image and there it is if you're if yeah just stretch it a bit you can put you put a cross on it where it needs to be where the comet is and you'll do the same on the show the last image and there's it where I've clicked on where the comet is after clicking global it'll make all files with a prefix of ca on the back of it now you can pick whatever folder you, you want to put them all in and once you've done that you can go into process um image integration now there's all the files. If you look at the back of them, you got the uh, comic prefixes for them. Now if we add all these files together, I just leave everything as per uh, default and add them all together and I come up with this. Now to be honest that looks a bit of a mess and it is a bit of a mess but what I have done is if I, I've cropped it down and then um, took the stars out with using star exterminator which didn't do a bad job if you look at it look at that one and that one it's a uh, it's not so bad so that's what i've done there but this is the gradients are really bad they really are so what i've had to do i've had to i i, I tried um dynamic background extraction and that's what i come up with it's like oh my god that's really it's a little look doesn't look very good at all does it um but I used automatic and that come up like that. Not very good again. And after running it a couple of times and I used the easy stretch, I've managed to get it to this. But what I had to do again was I had to use some range masks. Now I've, I've made the range mask and that was the mask I've come up with after getting to this stage. 
I'll put the mask on to protect the comic. The dark in this background. I I used a dynamic uh, background as correction again with the range mask on it, and that uh, brought it back down again. It, it gave me an half decent image. And what I've done after some stretching, I put the stars. I got the stars. What I'd already done, and then. After some stretching, I come up with this. This was the starless image of the comet. After using the range mask and dynamic background as correction, a little bit of curves work. And I don't believe that's not too bad, all things considered. But after using pixel math, I just added them together. And that's where I come up with this one. Um the image which I'm reasonably pleased uh, considering I started out with this you know it's a uh, it's a bit different isn't it you know I'm, I'm reasonably happy with it there's some very faint star trails going through the comic but there's very little I can do about that but I managed to get a lot of this coma and you can see the green there, which overall, all things considered, yeah. it's reasonable. Reasonable. It's not. It's not the best. I can anybody can see that, but I've done the best what I could do with what I was working with, and um, I'm reasonably happy with it. So I'm going to put the on the end of this video, but you can see there. I'd just like to thank uh, everybody, my subscribers. Um, I really do appreciate it and if you like this video give it a like and a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed I'd really appreciate it if you did subscribe because it really does help me channel out so until the next video uh, I'll see you again and thank you very much and clear skies